And now I get to talk to my trading warrior brother, Cred. Welcome back, Cred at Crypto Cred. Welcome back to Face. How are you today, buddy? I'm very well, thank you. How are you doing? Thanks for having me back. Oh, uh, it's great to have you back. In fact, you know, I took my first foray into uh, crypto, although it's not crypto. I bought a trust called GBTC because I don't even know who to really trust open a crypto <laughs> account with and um not sure if you could leave money there i i just feel um uh you know maybe you could help me with that but uh we're looking at bitcoin here yeah. and you know i i want to ask you uh is it a possibility i know this is the long term you're looking at the weekly here and it hasn't done mm -hmm. anything right on a weekly basis but uh since that low that we had, there is potential for a higher low here. We we retraced 78.6 of the initial bounce, and if it can gather some momentum and even just squeeze shorts, um, it's very possible that we could have uh, at least a very nice correction back to the breakdown at six grand or mm -hmm. something like that. So, am I delusional in no, I uh, moving into it here at this these price levels? No, I don't think so necessarily, not from a, a long-term point of view anyway. Uh, my personal map is slightly stricter in terms of uh, getting in for, you know, significant upside potential. Um, so even if we you go to the monthly... To, you need it to prove itself to the upside. I really do. I need, I need okay. much more evidence than this. Um, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a sucker for recency when it comes to just price action, price levels. And yeah. so when 6K broke... Uh, very decisively as it did, um, my position was that I'm not particularly interested in looking at structure back on this side of the chart, you know, from the run up in 2017, oh, uh, end of 2017. And to me, that was just the decision saying, you know, these price levels are really quite old. They're not yeah. particularly clear to me. So I'm going to wait for price to prove itself, you, you know, with recent market, market structure as opposed to, you know, guess at that breakdown, whether this consolidate, you know, to get my pen out, whether this consolidation is going to hold, whether it's going to be this breakdown level, this level, or whatever it may be, right? What would um, what would tell you that that uh, potentially uh, there's a at least a bear market rally coming in Bitcoin? Sure. Uh, yeah, I've been thinking about this a fair bit actually. Um, so in terms of a bear market rally, looking at the monthly, um, the only so once six K broke, right? If we just visualize this in, yeah. in very rough terms, so you know, let's just draw out. Let's say this is the 6,000 level, the shelf, however you want to draw it. Once right. that level was broken and we we're in the process of forming this monthly candle, we can even drop a time frame, but I am right. interested in this monthly. Once that was broken, I looked at the monthly and I said, okay, well, what's, if I am going to refer to structure on this chart, what's the only possible thing that I can look at, right, if I'm being reasonable? And to me, that was this candle here, just that one candle in essence, because that's the only real area of resistance um, that we had on the run up, right? So price goes yeah. up, turned into a blow. Down yeah, month, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then forms a base here, if you will, until it goes off for its blow off top, right? So I'm anticipating should we, at that point, should we return to this level? Um, if buyers are going to bother stepping in anywhere near, uh, you know, 5,000 as this lines up, it should be at this level, or at least if you want to box it out, uh, something like this. Right at that origin of this breakout. Now, instead, what happened um, was price fell through it completely. Right. Yeah. So that's so on the way down, we're anticipating support. Since it's fallen through completely, that's now become resistance. Right. It failed to do its job as support, so it's become resistance. So in terms of bear market rally, to answer your question concretely, I'd need to see this level get reclaimed, and that comes out at about 4,200 to about 4,700. Quite a big zone, but it is a monthly chart. You can see on the weekly, uh, the structure is quite clear. It's pretty much this break, you know, this breakout high. Yeah. Right? Price okay. comes in, resistance, and then goes crazy. I think if that structure gets reclaimed, um, it's pretty clear skies to the bearish retest level of 6,000. If you want to be aggressive with it, um, I think the most recent weekly resistance that's been slapping down the price, um, which comes out at about 4,000, 4,100, if you can get price accepted above there, um, it might just chew through this level and, you know, because of the amount of people wanting to trade six, it might just 
gravitate towards that price structure naturally. Fred, does most of the price action and volume happen during Asian trading hours because they're bigger adopters of uh, Bitcoin? Um, not from my observations. Um, okay. Especially recently, it's, it's, it's been quite bizarre. It's, it's been on weekends. Um, so technically, when there's no session <laughs> going right. on, that a lot of the volatile moves have um, have taken place. So the week ends up being quite slow. Everyone lets their guard down for the weekend, and then the rug is pulled, so to speak. Um, but I personally haven't noticed um, any any such relationship that you point out. I'm sure there are people who follow that kind of data much more closely, um, and I'll be sure to tag you in a tweet mm -hmm. if any of them follow up with something interesting. But no, session, I haven't noticed that specific relationship. Okay, I, I also, the reason I asked that, if you could pull up a shorter term chart, like maybe a four hour. Sure, of course. Um, you see all these uh, big wicks I do. That we've had, you know, uh, many, many, many over the last several days and weeks. Uh, 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 when are those taking place? And to me, as a technician, it almost smacks of accumulation uh, that people are buying that break. It won't stay down there. It, uh, you know, it's like pushing a beach ball underwater and snaps <laughs> right back. And, yeah. So I'm wondering, uh, you know what time of day those spikes come in and maybe it's all you know all different hours but to you does that look like obviously there's buyers coming in down there right yeah i mean the wicks or them shorts are, covering or 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 what yeah or I illiquidity like, maybe just illiquidity i think um a lot of um traders employing far too much leverage um and who who essentially get liquidated or stopped out on these very short thin moves i think illiquidity is to a certain point as well um you know you can at certain points push around the market with without a huge amount of money um to the question of accumulation uh from a higher time frame point of view potentially i mean personally for me as a you know shorter term at least level to level trader um spikes in price aren't enough i need to see follow through from price um right. in order for me to perceive that as accumulation, right? So, you know, if it is a stop run, for example, to get the weak hands or whatever um, out of the market before trading higher, I'm trading below the low itself isn't going to be enough. I'm going to anticipate then, you know, some sort of breakout or higher high, and then that's good evidence to me um, that the market's, you know, being accumulated or that was a stop run. Because, so, you know, if you look at the price chart generally, uh, it's been quite wicky, and you know, yeah. you know all over the place looking at it and really? yet it keeps yeah. trading lower um in True. the bigger picture so i suppose a lot of people uh, have been waiting for accumulation from crazy price levels and i on higher time frames at least haven't seen great evidence for it yet and uh, uh what exchanges uh uh, and I'm, I want to ask you, when you trade oh. crypto, do you put in a, phys a physical stop order? Or is it a mental stop and you just get out? Uh, and what usually happens to stops? Are they butchered? Right. Um, so I, I, I reside in the United Kingdom, so I'm allowed to, unlike my um, friends in the United States, to use BitMEX, um, which is a leveraged trading exchange. I, for the most part, yeah, I'm, I will use uh, hard stops. Uh, so market okay. stops um, for my full position size. Um, and even that's not always going to be amazing because of the slippage that can occur. Right. And then not just slippage, even if you might be right on the direction, as you pointed out, a lot of these wicks make it very hard to define your risk, right? Especially if you're trading these lower time frames, as, as Steve said earlier, for a lot of these charts, where are you going to put your stop, right? And that's a, that, that's a question I always ask myself before taking any trade. Um, Please go ahead. Well, you're out, you're out there in the crypto community quite a bit. Uh, do you feel uh, from you know people that you interact with on social mm -hmm. media and elsewhere uh, that people feel despair after what happened in the last 12 months? Um, I'd say a lot of the despair is hidden um, in the form of those people who are feeling despair have simply disappeared from the community and want nothing to do with it. And the people who okay. are still left tend to be the more resilient lots or the ones who have just, you know, decided to dig in their heels and that they're going to be on the stride. Right. Lifers, the one who made the ones who made good <laughs> friends and good connections, you know, in, in this market. And so sticking around with the community, you know, in it for the tech, as the joke goes as well. You know, those who 
came for the bubble and stayed for the technology involuntarily, perhaps, but <laughs> that's the result. Um, so I think they were, it, it, please. Yeah. You know how, uh, day traders, when the position isn't working can turn into a scalper and then into a swing trader <laughs> and then into a position trader. And finally, at the end of the long and winding road, become investors. <laughs> yeah, it's the classic, or, you know, if you want to sell or buy an area and it goes completely offside, you just tell your friends that you're working an area as opposed to a specific price level. <laughs> and so you just keep moving your stock because the areas becomes surprisingly wide, <laughs> the more offside okay. you get. <laughs> so uh, why don't we talk about the majors? You know, in FX, we have the majors, they're mainly the dollar pairs. So uh, sure. I, to me, as a novice, uh, the other two majors are uh, Litecoin and Ethereum. Uh, I know you're a technician, but are there better fundamental stories in any of the other two compared to Bitcoin that uh, when markets turn, uh, you have a favored or preferred long among the three of them. Uh, I believe Ethereum and Litecoin have depreciated closer to 90%, while mm -hmm. Bitcoin's been about 83 or so, just guessing. No, I, th I think that's right. Um, I think in terms of the majors, a lot of people um, would mention Ripple as well, XRP. I think I saw in, um, I think it was in Steve's watch list. Um, a very polarizing asset in the community. But no, in terms of the majors, I think in terms of uh, preferred longs... Why, why are people going to Ripple? Uh, can you tell the story behind it, Cred? Gosh, fundamentally, um, I think a lot of people are attracted to the fact that um, it's a bit of a corporate machine. Uh, you know, it, it's a real company with that corporate flair and big money. And so they and it's stuck around for a while. So they Good don't feel it's going any... Yeah, excellent marketing and just general PR. And so in terms of longevity, they see that it's got excellent marketing, very dedicated community, and a lot of money, um, and a track record of sticking around since however long it's been around. Um, I think that has attracted a lot of people who think that, um, you know, it's not going to go anywhere before the next run. Not unreasonably so. Do you have a chart on it? Uh, sure, I can, I can dig one up. I'm curious. I know that... Uh, uh, it had a pretty good run, I don't know, about three, four months ago. Oh, yeah, I think that was it, right? So we've almost retraced that recent big run we had in the summer. Oh, absolutely, one yeah. day pop. What, what was that one-day pop about? Um, are you referring to this run here? Uh, no, I think it's back in September. The the big, you know, big move. Oh, People I saying, see. Oh, this. yeah, Ripple uh, tripled in a, a day or so. What I'm was that to about? If that's, uh, if, if that's uh, swell conference related. I don't follow Ripple's fundamentals particularly closely. Okay. Um, I think we saw, did we see relief in the market all around towards the end of, I'll need to check very quickly. Okay. Um, I, well, actually, no, we didn't. So it I almost think, looks like a pump and dump uh, type of thing right, that they do right. in, pink, in pink sheet stocks where <laughs> they just pay, they pay people to bring in buying. Right. That's right. what they I do see. in penny stocks. I seem, to recall that this yeah. investor, yeah, I um, yeah. I, I seem to recall that this investor yeah, I bet. I recall that this happened while Bitcoin was falling off aggressively. Um, uh -huh. So you got a bit of, I mean, if I'm being cynical, of marketing there, sort of juxtaposing how Bitcoin is dumping and looks very weak, whereas Ripple looks very strong in contrast to the number one. Um, but that's just me being cynical. Uh, as you pointed out, though, it has pretty much fully retraced to the origin uh, of this original so this being the you know support resistance level yeah. or you know consolidation right or whatever that led to that run um and it's pretty much come into that level it could be a decent setup especially if it takes out this low you know you get a stop run or spike of this deep swing point into a level of support yeah. um could see a relief rally yeah. but i think it shouldn't or at least where i'd be taking profit um, pretty much this broken floor, similar on Bitcoin, right? A lot of these uh, yeah. majors entered a range. In the past couple of days, the range low has broken down. And so from a technical point of view, until proven otherwise, rallies back into that level uh, are for selling, right? Bitcoin was the same. It went very quiet for quite a bit. The range low that I had drawn out was the low of this big impulse leg. And then the high of the next day as the other boundary. You can see it consolidated, then got stuck below the you know 
uh, this level of support turned resistance and now has now has fallen through, right? So from a technical point of view, um, although Bitcoin doesn't really like behaving in this way, rallies into there um, are for selling until proven otherwise, right? I think if it re-enters the range, there's a good chance it'll reach for the range high, but we'll just get more of this um, as opposed to anything interesting. Um, it is at support now though, right? If we're, if we're drawing out structures or levels or whatever else, um, my eye is drawn to this structure here because just quite simply, you can see you had a drop, a bit of a base, and then the drop that followed took out this swing point, right? So if has we want the, to- uh, Has the futures contract caught on at all? It's been out there for a year actually. Uh, the launch of the futures contract yeah. marked the high in Bitcoin. Uh, do you follow it and do you get any market messages from what happens with the futures? Um, I personally don't, only some volatility based uh, things around settlement dates, um, but it's not a data set that I follow particularly closely. Um, a lot of people pay a lot of homage to the gaps that are left in that market and how the, then the, well, this is isn't technically spot, but anyway, how the spot market will then go and fill the futures gaps. Right. Um, so yeah. that's kind of how they're used, but it, it's not something I pay an awful amount of attention to. If I think futures are settling and my position might be on the wrong side of the volatility, I'll just sit out, but I don't use it to really inform my trades uh, at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Before um, I ask you, before yeah. I ask you what else you trade, Greg, uh, are you still a believer? In this asset class, I mean, it's your handle, uh, you know, your community <laughs> and a lot of people that you're with. Uh, do you still believe in the fundamental story that these uh, cryptos are going to survive uh, and that uh, this was just another mm -hmm. bubble and there's another cycle coming and thinking about what the catalyst might be for more adoption mm -hmm. of crypto? Uh, I think my uh, fundamental view is quite conservative, that I think the asset class will survive in one form or another, but it's very possible that it will survive with the overwhelming majority of the um, altcoins, so to speak, having virtually no value whatsoever, right? With just a few of the yeah. larger ones or more established ones sticking around. Um, so yeah, I view it from quite a broad brush perspective that I don't think digital assets are necessarily going anywhere. Um, I think Bitcoin is probably going to stick around for a fair bit, um, but any projections beyond that from a fundamental point of view, um, it, it was very much a bubble, right? And most of these yes. useless tokens, which raised in you know exorbitant, unjustifiable amounts of money, it almost wouldn't be right for them to survive. <laughs> um, yeah, it was so it's a kind of nuclear transfer. winter of sorts. Yeah, uh, a major wealth transfer from the naive to the slime. Absolutely. Uh, and anyway, so uh, what else you pay attention to in this environment? You know, it's 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you're a disciplined technician. Uh, anything else on your radar outside of crypto that you want to talk about? Yeah, I mean, specifically for this year, um, I'm going to be moving a fair bit uh, of my capital to Forex and trading currencies. Oh, interesting. Um, well, yeah, welcome, so welcome to the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'll, I'll learn the handshakes. And it's the like Hotel customs. California, buddy. You can check out, but you can never leave. Because I've tried. But, uh, You've tried. Well, yeah. Welcome, welcome to the world. Thank you. Yeah. And there are all these jokes, you know, in crypto about, oh, the market won't bottom until everybody starts trading Forex, this, that, and the other. Um, oh, but it really comes back to my origins. So I recently published an article on Medium about my trading mentors or teachers, whatever you want to call them. And they're all from Forex, right? I learned right. how to trade and, you know, you know, trade technicals from Forex traders, um, especially because I haven't been a massive uh, fan of the price action on Bitcoin recently. Um, and I do have a bit of an appetite for a more regulated uh, environment. And quite simply, okay. price behaves quite well, com so certainly compared to Bitcoin in many cases in currency markets. So I've been following deal. them. You get Sorry, one day that? off. Get one, one day, day off. off. <laughs> huh? I'll take yeah. it. I'll take I it. used to get two days off, you know, before 24 6. Uh, That's it. You know, and then we'd have a lot of gaps in commodities and so forth, uh, you know, before we went to electronic trading. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you have a view on anything that you're paying attention to in the dollar? We've recently had a pretty good pop in uh, euro, and cable has rallied uh, fairly dramatically with all the 
background noise of Brexit, uh, wondering what your okay. So we're looking at the U.S. dollar here. Um, we are, yeah. So in in terms of okay. um, macro view, uh, not really a huge uh, amount. So the the only so I looked at it this morning. Funny that you ask. Uh, from an intraday point of view, um, I'm not really a fan um, that we've lost pretty much this structure here on the dollar index, especially so okay. impulsively, right? Yeah, so any, any, Yes, quite. Yeah. So any moves up uh, in the short term, I'll be viewing um, as, re, you know, corrective or retracements um, and anticipating lower. Um, as you mentioned, I th let me just quickly check when 25th was that. Yeah, so this is a kind of uh, into the weekend breakdown. Right. Yeah, um, that was uh, kind of spurred by an article in the Wall Street Journal that the Fed was going to was looking at uh, beginning to end QT uh, running off its balance sheet. Well, there you so go. The, yeah. Yeah. So I'm that naturally a, always more skeptical uh, of breakdowns that happen at fishy times, if you will. So, you know, overnight sessions uh, coming into yeah. the weekend or if you trade crypto on Sunday lunchtime, <laughs> um, okay. those sorts of breakdowns I treat with some uh, skepticism. So in terms of upside, if 96 level gets reclaimed, I'd like to trade, see it trade towards the high at 96.70. Um, if we get weakness at the 96 level, I'll treat this breakdown as genuine and anticipate lower on the dollar index. And so okay. Euro and um, Cable, I presume, um, will be able to trade higher. Uh, are you watching any commodities now, Cred? Uh, gold recently uh, priced above 1300 uh, A lot of interest coming into gold. It's actually done pretty well with the flat dollar. Yeah. Uh, like it's uh, rallying against all currencies, uh, probably. That's right. uh, yeah, that, that's kind of interesting when it can rally against everything and finally against mm -hmm. dollars rallying. That's right. No, I haven't been paying attention uh, to gold, the specific level. Um, was pretty much, so I can quickly mark it out in itself, 1292. But in general, the structure was drop this base here that yeah. led to this monster, monster sell off. You can right. see the price had a real fight around there for three weeks, um, right. looking quite weak, but no breakdown, right? No lower low formed on the engagement. And then last week's candle uh, absolutely plowed through that. I treat retaking. Uh, this structure here is pretty significant. I mean, it's still at intermediate resistance or close by in the form of these old lows here. Um, but I think if we can stay above 1300, um, high, these highs here are next. Okay, so uh, if you're flat gold and you look at it here, do you just hold your nose and buy it even though you've had a $140 rally? I mean, I wouldn't buy it right here, let's say, at market, because, again, as I pointed out, it's straight up at a resistance level here, right? This previous, you can yeah. see this floor that it built up, so one touch, two, three, four, arguably five touch level that was retested and then led to an aggressive sell-off. So higher, like, weekly time frame, I think the level, you know, which was pretty much this structure, the fact that we've retaken that increases the probability that we trade higher, logically being towards these highs. But at market, I wouldn't smash it. Um, because, I mean, it's right at this old floor. Right? There's pretty much a cluster of resistance at 1300s. If you can start getting acceptance above that, then I think yeah. um, we're good to go for the highs, but but not at market where we are right now. Okay. Uh, actually, I think, uh, you know, uh, between here and 1320, you might get some type of short-term top. I would love to see 1250 again. So uh, yeah, that's yeah. something that, yeah, wouldn't that be nice back under 1278? Uh, should trigger mm -hmm. it. Uh, um, do you have a business model, Cred, or are you just a humanitarian helping people out all the time? <laughs> business it's model. Because uh, if you are, I'll, you know, I'll nominate you for the Nobel Peace <laughs> Prize. So. Um, business model, not at the moment, uh, is the answer. Okay. I think I think I'm far too traumatized having studied law at university um, to do everything right oh. and proper and regulators, this, that, and the other. Um, yeah. So there are a couple of basic things that I'm working on. I want to do, I want to do like a um, video webinar subscription type thing, but I've been working with lawyers for over four months, I think, trying to sort out the regulatory part of it, and I'm none the wiser. Um, 
So humanitarian, perhaps business model in progress. Uh, it all depends yeah. on the suit that I email every well, day. Well, you're, you're so, smart to be looking at com potential compliance issues before they happen. I, and, I agree. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, sometimes an ounce of prevention, you know, so, uh, you know, when you uh, launch something like that, uh, please let me know and we'll have you back and appreciate your time and letting your followers know you're going to be talking to me. Uh, why, don't we, why don't we leave it with this? Uh, the most important piece of trading advice you could give everyone who's watching us live and listens to it later. The most important piece. Um, this is going to sound terrible, but be yourself. And specifically, I mean, uh, imitating traders has become very trendy and popular. Um, and I've almost, I think I've never met a single trader who was successful by purely uh, imitating someone else. So be yourself. That's, that's great. Yeah, take stuff that works for you, yeah. ditch what doesn't, and ultimately, you know, you're trading for yourself, so why don't you make it work for you? That's, that's what I'd say. You know, you'd be surprised. Uh, Jack uh, Schwager, who wrote the uh, Market Wizard series, answered the question this way. He said, find a trading style that suits your personality. That's it. So you were, you know, basically saying the same thing. You're, you know. You're you're like Jack Schwager. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> fair comparison. Yeah, you have more followers than him on Twitter. Check it out. Oh, anyway, yes. uh, uh, Cred, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks Good for having hunting. me. Uh, you know, hope you have a great 2019 and uh, your transition to forex that pips rain down on you all year. <laughs> Thank you very much, mate. Thanks for having me. Uh, all right, all right, buddy. So that's it for Turnaround Tuesday. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Good hunting, and see everyone tomorrow. You could follow uh, Cred at CryptoCred on Twitter. Thanks again. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings, and I'll see everyone tomorrow. I'm a crypto guy now. <laughs>